My name is Cam Hudson, and I got next. You next up, and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next, you up next. Keep the going so hard. Rise a star on the big scene, make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat, don't settle for less. They put you through that test, your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, heard it say go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask Pete Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Shit. KT, keep that beat rolling for me. Welcome back to another episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next, a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we got a very special one for you today. All right. This is going to be a tale of bounce back, but it's also going to be a precautionary tale that we think a lot of athletes need to hear this, especially starting at a younger age. I want to introduce you guys to to. 6'1", 190 pounds. This man is a grown man out there on that football field. Cornerback for the University of Sioux Falls. We got Killer Cam Hudson in the building. How you doing, CJ? Good, good. How you guys doing today? Man, we super excited to have you on there because you about to give back. You about to do something for everybody else that nobody did for you, and so we appreciate that. Keller, we're going to get to your, uh, your 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 initiation so you can become part of the family. But before we get to yours, we got to invite all the people to new viewers, right? I am your host, the mouth of the South, B. Jones, the Louisiana animal, Mr. Yeet himself. I'm rocking alongside of my colleague, my co-host, the architect, the head coach, Kevin. Kev, how you feeling, man? I'm feeling good, man, and I'm trying to remember the lyrics to uh, Cameron's "Oh Boy." Oh my! Because you call him Killer Cam, and that's yeah. all in my head. But man, he kind of look like him a little bit too. Man. <laughs> nah, he don't, man. He don't like Killer Cam. Stop playing with him. <laughs> like, he, he, he got a smile. Hey, this dude, he got that cold gate. This boy here is the truth. Yeah, All right, so check this out. Hey, Cam is about to become part of the family and initiation, but we need you to do a sports like talk tradition, and we want to open up the invitation, the doors for you to become a, a member of our family. We know you could have been anywhere looking at any podcast, so it is with great appreciation that Kevin and I, we, we, we thank you so much for coming and checking out the channel and learning about these amazing stories of outstanding people doing amazing things and accomplishing big dreams with you guys next. So on the count of three Sioux Falls Pasadena Pasadena up, always up to no good you know what I'm saying listen we need y'all to show us some love and smash that subscribe button are y'all ready Cam you people ready they ready one two three Ooh. Well, welcome to the family we got over 150 episodes of sports life talk from actors content creators coaches olympians football players that's in the nfl this thing is is growing so go check out the archives but for right now we got a very special one here today so uh, I, I hope i don't lose my cool and start to crying on this thing cam i i lose my my professionalism but bro i'm so appreciative for you stopping by and doing this i'm so excited so cam are you ready for the initiation Yes, sir. And I appreciate you guys for having me, too. All right, let's go. All right. To initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. Um, Top five, I'll probably go Lil Baby, um, Dirt, uh, Moneybag, YG, um, Drake up there, and I'll probably go with uh, Roddy Rich. I like Roddy. I like Roddy. I like that top five. Kevin, he hit a lot of home runs on that thing, man. Well, you can tell us a young man's top five, too, can't you? I don't know, man. I, I like, I like Money Bag, yo, KT. I like Drake. Come on. You yeah, like as, far, as far as new generation, that's my top five. No, you hit the win a little you know, Roddy. Eat the win yeah, a little Jones, you, Yeah, you having a midlife crisis, too. That's why you listen to the kind of music. So it, it's all good. Hey, so give us your favorite sports teams. Um, I watch a lot of college, probably – Professional, I'd probably say the Rams and their hometown favorite, the Dodgers. I don't watch too much baseball, but you know, that, that boy from LA, KT, yeah. he remember, hey, you, can, you can hear that little West Coast coming out. <laughs> hey, <he> about, <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, but I got to get him though, Kevin. If he's from ahead. LA, no Nipsey, shame oh, on yeah. you. Kevin. Hey, no, actually, I take that back. Nip is up there. I forgot. Okay, all right, 
No, B. John, well, who, you know, who you gonna take out? Who you now, but never forgotten. That's Nip. So we yeah. gonna take Lil Dirk out. We gonna get yeah. Lil Dirk out. Let's swap Dirk for, for Nip. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, who is your favorite superhero and why? Um, I'm gonna probably go Batman just because uh, the Dark Knight Rises, Bruce Wayne, um, the Batmobile, the Mad Black look. You know, just the, the, the everything about Batman, man. It's kind of it kind of stuck out to me more than Superman. So I'm gonna throw up the Batman. I like that. All that's right. Ke- that's Kevin's favorite superhero too. You know, so. I didn't want to make it about me, B. Jones, but yeah, that is my favorite superhero. <laughs> All right, Bruce Wayne. Since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your theme song be? Um, before the game, we like to listen to a lot of Nip. Uh, uh, I like Meek Mill. I'm a boss. Feature Rick Ross. Uh, a lot of Rick Ross too. Just like a lot of um, you know, encouraging type you know music to get us ready, get our mental right for the game. So you should have put Rick Ross in your top five too, man. That would be up there too. Yeah. He's up there too. All right, B. Jones. I think it's safe to say that our man CJ is in the family. So go ahead and take it away. Nah, it's nephew right here, nephew CJ, man. We're so glad to have you on, have you on the store uh, on the show, man. Because you you got a crazy story and. Oh, we, we got to tell people but before we get to to why we're here today. Let's talk a little bit about your background. Let's let's run this story started from the beginning. Now, you coming out of Pasadena. Tell us a little bit about coming up at, on, on the West Coast. What's sorry? Tell us a little bit about um, Pasadena. I mean, it's the best of both worlds. I mean, you got the up and the down, you know, depending on what part of the city you were you know, raised in. Um, I seen a little bit of both. Um, you know, I was born in the West. I was born on the West side, but I was lived on the East side. So I was back and forth a lot. Um, played Pop Winter on the east side in Creek Park, uh, passing the Trojans. Um, went to high school at Bishop Alamany my freshman year. Uh, then I transferred to Etiwanda in the IE, where I graduated from. After that, I um, went JUCO. Uh, from JUCO, I went to Dixie State. Um, due to NCAA rules, guidelines, I couldn't play at Dixie State. So now I'm here at University of Super Bowl. Yeah, you you sped through it, man. But you you had a little spe- you had some special stuff coming up. You was a standout on the track. You was a standout on the, on the football field, man. So w- when did you realize that you was gonna be a football player, man? Um, really, since probably like five years old. I mean, just my peers and everybody I grew up with, cousins and just family, you know, friends. Everybody just we all played football together. You know, that was just the thing, like. You know, I guess certain people's hobbies are they game together or they might collect shoes together or, you know, whatever. But our hobby was we played football together. We worked out <laughs> together. We played football together, you know. So. That's a hell of a hell of a hobby right there. We know, so, we go beat the hell out of each other. Yeah, that's great. Everybody man. else. See, it's EJ, how old are you, man? You 21? 23. 23. All right. So, because everybody else was around there trying to collect Pokemon and Garbage yeah, Pail King. Yeah. And you was, up, you was up there like, y'all put that ball. We we going to play yeah, this ball over here. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, all right. So, uh, so, so we're gonna we're gonna get to your story here in a second. Uh, but you chose cornerback as a position. Are you just not? I mean, because I, I don't know. I see six one one ninety. I'm thinking Debo Samuel. I think you could have been a monster wide receiver. Why did you choose the defensive side of the ball? I played receiver all high school. I just started playing DB in JUCO. So okay, okay. Dude, I went to JUCO actually to play receiver. I played receiver probably like the first couple practices I was there. We were low on DBs, and I just went to the defensive side, the dark side. You know. at the dark side. Now, do you have that type of mentality, though, CJ? You want that kind of contact every play? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was tired of getting hit. I'm like, it's my time to do the hit, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> say he like doing it well yeah, it's a lot of opportunities out there for corners that to me cornerback and quarterback right those are the two most difficult positions because you are literally you, you are you're trying to take away something which you you 100% reactionary so I don't know man that's a, that's a tough position so shout out to you man but but we're here today because there's an education deficiency out there in the nation. You know, there's a lot of high schoolers, you know, freshmen, sophomores, even juniors and seniors. And then at that point in time, it might even be too late, right? That are trying to take their careers to the next level. They all want to go play college ball. And uh, y- your, your route has been non-tradition. Uh, you've had some some bumps and you've had to kind of learn a lot through this process, man. So tell us how crazy this thing has been for you, man. And and, and tell us a little bit about what you've learned along the way. Um, man, first and foremost, uh, NCAA and it's been a headache. Um, um, like I said, I originally went JUCO from JUCO. I went um, to Dixie State at D1, but I actually graduated high school in 2016. So. My D1 eligibility time clock was up. 
Um, and I was, I didn't know, you know, there was nobody that really in my ear that was kind of guiding me along the way that kind of, you know, informed me of the NCAA rules and regulations. So I kind of learned the hard way and on my own. So what are, what exactly are the rules that, that kind of messed over your eligibility? Um, so basically, as soon as I graduated high school, I had took a year off from football, but I was still a full-time student. So ah. I wasn't playing on the field, but I was still a full-time student in the classroom. So they counted that against me as a year I played on the field. So that's what kind of messed me up, you know? So it kind of took away from years I had to compete. So now, what, how, how did you finally learn? Did you, did you learn about these just in the administration's office and fighting for your eligibility? And all of a sudden they said, hey, based on this rule, this rule, this rule, you, you, you kind of stuck like Chuck here. Basically, yeah, um... When I got to Dixie State, probably like my first couple of weeks there, I got there, got acquainted, uh, met all the coaches, coaching staff and everything. Um, and it was actually in the middle of COVID. So I had got there and they had canceled the season. And then we were going to have a spring season instead. Um, so I think uh, spring ball started maybe like three days prior to me getting there. Um, I had got there maybe like three days before. Like I said, they come into the office and like, uh, you're not eligible to play, you know, due to NCAA rules, your time clock is up for D1. We recommend you go in D2. I was just at a total shock, and you know I had to leave, and I found University of Sioux Falls. Thank God, in the last minute. Man, so I, I don't want to, but I, I'm just trying to think. I, I want to talk a little bit more about Sioux Falls, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to scale. Just run through this real quick, man. So, in your opinion, how should this have been handled? Like, who should have? Like, should this be on the coaches? Should it have been on someone in the administrations? Do you think that? Hey, like, listen, it's on me. You know, I, I should have been digging into the NCAA website. Who, 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 where do you think the ball was dropped in this situation? Um, well, obviously, you know, considering you know this is my life, you know, I take full responsibility. But um, it could have been handled a lot better on my end, um, coaches end, um. And, you know, maybe there's a third party, you know, somebody else that's like a mentor or, you know, I wish I could have had in my circle that could have been like, oh, you know, check this and do this and, you know, do your homework on this. Um, so I kind of lacked that. So, you know, maybe a coach could have stepped up a little bit more um, in high school. Um, maybe Juco. Actually, I kind of was informed briefly about it through Juco, my Juco coach. It's kind of gotcha. what I about it. But high school, I was totally naive to it. Man, so there's somebody at the house right now that's probably went through the same situation here, and they're like, God, they got him too. But also, there's also somebody you can. <laughs> can you stupid. There's also somebody that you could probably help before this this all happens to them. What advice would you give to that person? Like, hey, this is a resource. This is a book. This is a person you need to go reach out to. Um, even if it's just, hey, go talk to your student counselor or whatever. What advice would you give? to the person that's sitting in, you know, in your seat when it was 2017. Yeah, you basically said it. I would say probably a student counselor or academic advisor um, or someone in the athletic department um, area of their school. Um, I highly recommend that, you know, get your ear, you know, get in there, get in their ear, um, you know, get as much info as you can about, you know, the NCAA, um, the rules, regulations, guidelines. Um, I just recently learned that there was a gray shirt too. I didn't even know that. I know there was a red shirt, yep. a red shirt. But I didn't even know it was a gray shirt. I thought it was a gray shirt. Probably would have used that too, but you know, I was, you sure could have. You know, yeah. So I just didn't know. Man, so I don't want you to. I don't want you to say nothing that's, that's going to get you in trouble with the NCAA. So I, I want you to be. I want you to edify what you're about to say. But in your opinion. Is these rules, I mean, do these rules really truly serve their purpose? And the only reason I ask that is because the older I get, it's a lot of rules out there. You know, you can't cross the street in Mississippi uh, with an alcohol bomb. Yeah. And it it might have been something big in 1718 when the rules were written, right? But yeah, yeah. it has no place in today's society. All these rules that you have been, you know, that you've been caught up into, do they have a, 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 a actual cause that's going to prevent people from stealing eligibility or cheating? the system or something like that because to me on the outside i'm just a i'm just a podcast host right but to me i'm seeing a young guy who's smart who's charismatic who wants to play who's being denied an opportunity based off of a rule yeah um i mean there's pros and cons to it but i mean you can see the cons to it obviously you know my situation you know there's a lot of other guys from my city that you know are dying to play too and you know have falling victim to the same trap. So um, the pros to it, I can see from the NCAA's point of view, was probably um, not letting a guy that's too old compete with 
people who are like a younger body, you know, right. like a grown man competing with somebody young. I could see that in a way. But as far as like being a full time student and now that's a year of eligibility on the field that kind of, you know, gets held against you. I don't agree with that, you know, too much. I think that needs to be altered or changed somehow or, you know, even if I feel like if you weren't informed about that rule, there should be some type of petition or something to where you could bypass that rule if you legitimately did not know. You know? Yep. Yep. Well, I'm going to say this, man. I, I was watching some bowl games. I'm, I'm a diehard LSU fan. I find a way to get that in every single show. But we played LSU played a bowl game, and I don't know why I can't even think of the name of the team we played against. They had a good quarterback. It was a, it was an up-and-coming team. They were wild, and they, they went out there, and they beat the brakes off of us. But they quarterback, and I kid you not, CJ, they quarterback has seven years of eligibility See, based crazy. on the fact based on the fact that COVID didn't count he used gray shirts medical red shirts it was 7 years of eligibility to do like 24 years 24 25 years old playing against those same 18 and 19 year olds so and, and, and besides I grew up on a TV show where like I don't know it's called Necessary Roughness Kevin you remember that movie Necessary yeah, Roughness same man. Yeah, that, I yeah they had a grown ass man come back to college because he had eligibility so I, I but this is like the dude from Florida State uh, Chris Winky. When he, was, yeah, yeah. But he was 30 years old when he graduated or something like that yeah. I might be over exaggerating but still he was old as Methuselah and still got an opportunity man so this to me this is a travesty camp there's no other way you could put it to me there's no other explanation other than the fact that they need to let you play ball where you want to play ball or where, they, where, where a team and a facility and a coach and a university will be willing to give you that opportunity and so let's talk about who is giving you that opportunity because D2 listen and I, and I know you, you're a D1 talent the only reason this is an issue is because Cam is a D1 one talent and he's playing on a lesser level which is division two but that's not that's not you know scathed over the fact that d2 is some hell of football it's a lot of stars that made it from D- division two and that's still some real good fun football they have a national championship out here in the in the, uh, the city of frisco every single year so t- tell us a little bit about your your team that you're playing for right now what you guys plan on getting accomplished and uh get accomplished this next fall um, yeah, so right now I'm at the University of Sioux Falls, um, head coach John Anderson, defensive coordinator Joe Ford, uh, both tremendous guys, um, welcomed me with very open arms and, you know, it's a very welcoming environment, um, tremendous guys on the team, um, all hardworking, passionate about what we do day in and day out. Um, and we're just, you know, it's a real family oriented environment, you know, we're just here to have fun and play ball, you know, literally. So yeah, I like it. Man, how, how what what is the adjustment for like you? You know, you you sitting up there running around the locker room playing nip and and, and, and balling all my life, and these boys up here. I mean, what uh, Sioux Falls? I mean, that, like it ain't nothing to do, man. You used to go down the street to Crenshaw. You used to go shopping, movie theaters. What is Sioux Falls like, man? What kind of adjustment has that been for you? You know, it hasn't been too bad. I mean, the worst thing I'll probably say is the weather. You know, it gets probably to about anywhere from like ten to twenty degrees, and it snows on you know random days. And, but probably the weather, um, the guys, um, there's not too much difference between the guys, the personalities of the guys and the guys back home. Um, you know, it, it's cool. Just the weather, I'll probably say it's the biggest uh, thing to adjust to. Now, see, Cam, I caught you in your first story. So I hope your mom ain't watching this episode. But you and I both know it's more than just a difference in weather. Tell us about the, the scene. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we, we need to get you to a HBCU, Cam. That's what we need to get you to, Ooh, man. Nah, but tell, tell, yeah, tell us about what the scene that's is like out there. It's different out here, too, yeah. Man, I know that's different. He's crazy. He's like, oh yeah, <laughs> uh, Uncle Uncle B, Uncle, Uncle Mouth. It's, it's it's hard out here for me, man. Yeah, it is, it is. yeah, that's what's up, man. What do y'all do for fun, though? What are y'all doing um, out there? Pretty much uh, tipping cows. In our well, nah. <laughs> in our spare time, uh, pretty much just chilling with the guys, man. We play Madden, two uh, K. Um, we're working on the closing line right now. Uh, oh. Teammates rap, you know, so we go to the studio in our spare time. You got some flow, you got some bars, and you see, I don't personally, I, I'm more of a writer, you know, I got to write to the beat, but you know, we, you know, we, we mess around in the studio. Yeah. That's what's up, man. We, y- y'all got that PS5 or that PS4? Y'all, y'all yeah, playing yeah, that, man? I got that new man. Yeah. All right, well, offline, CJ, I'm gonna need you to go and send me that code so I can run through you and your whole hey, crew, man. So I go ahead and do y'all something super, super, super dirty, man. All right, so uh, so we gonna be able to watch it this fall. We we're at least gonna be able to watch Division Two. Watch yes, watch Sioux Falls. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, y'all got a good team. Yeah, we do. We do. Um, we got a lot of dudes returning. We got a lot of dudes who left at the same time. Um, we got a great running back. Um, amazing D line. 
Um, we got a couple dudes who left in the secondary, so that's probably what we like the most right now. But, you know, um, I'm hoping to, you know, looking to help that, you know, step up this season. Uh, we got a great safety back there. Um, so awesome outside linebackers also. Um, so, yeah, we, we're, we're coming. Up, you know, we're coming this year. We're coming. We, finished, uh, we lost three games last year, um, and it really shouldn't have went that way. We should have really lost two at the most. Um, but, yeah, you know, we're we coming this year. Hey, a 6 one, 190 playing cornerback. CJ, I'm, I'm excited for you, dog. You keep your head. Hey, you keep doing what you're doing, brother, because it's, it's a lane out there for that body type, for that type of speed. Because people don't know. I ain't even able to touch. You a track standout. Like, uh, so you a monster. <laughs> you a monster in the track, too. So this boy got some things going for him, man. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, I, I, I kind of prefer track more than football, actually. So what I, I do, yeah, because it's like an individual sport. So it's like you don't really, you know. Sometimes you guys have. I mean, there's the cancers on the team sometimes. So it's like if everybody's not on the same accord, it's kind of mm. hard to accomplish that goal. And more track, it's like individualized. So it's like you know, if you focus, you know, you put in your work, you know, you know, you, you're more likely than not be able to achieve that goal. Plus the co-eds, but you are. <laughs> All right, uh, CJ, what is something that football has taught you that you can use when you're not on the field? Oh, man, hard work, dedication, time management. Um, really, honestly, I'll tell people this all the time. Football has changed my life. I mean, I've been playing since five, so everything I've literally gone through in life has been surrounded around football. From the people I've met to the places I've lived, the states I've moved to, um, the amazing coaches, the, the leadership. Um, the mentors I've met is all stemmed from football, honestly. So it's changed my life. You know, I, everything I've gone through in my life has really reflected around football. All right, CJ. So this is the part of the show where I get in your business business, okay? He's like, oh, hell. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but B. Jones mentioned the, the scenery there earlier. So just keep that in mind. Okay. All right. So it's a movie. You probably haven't seen it because you're young. It came out before you were born, I'm pretty sure. It's called A Program. Have you heard of it? I haven't. Um, you got to go check it out, CJ. Yeah. It's a class. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so Omar Epps, he plays, he's a running back. He's a freshman or something, too, isn't he, B. Jones? Yeah, yeah, incoming freshman. All right, so his character name is Darnell Jefferson. And his love interest, who's my love interest in real life, is Halle Berry. She's, she plays a character, Autumn Haley. Mm. So for Sports Life Talk, you're Darnell. Okay. Is there an Autumn in your life right now? You said it, Autumn's in my life right now? But are, are you seeing someone right now? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm single as Pringle, ready to mingle though. Ah! <laughs> single as a Pringle, man. But you know, you can't just eat one Pringle though. <laughs> 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 you had to hit the screens hard, little nephew. Okay, nah, that boy say he ready to mingle though. He ready right. to mingle. Nobody back, nobody back home though? No, nah, no, no, nah, no, 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 I'm single, man. Locked in for real. You know, locked in on a serious note. You know, I got goals to accomplish, man. I'm too far away from home to be messing around. So, you know, I'm trying to achieve some things for real. I like that, man. All right, yeah. B. Jones. <laughs> I think it's that time, man. All right, CJ, Cameron Hudson, welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show that most of our guests get excited for because now you are officially calling all the shots. All right. Have you ever played a game called Would You Rather? Yeah. All right, so the rules are very simple. Uh, Kevin and I will both present to you an option. You select one of those options. The option you select, that host will gain a point. The first host to gain two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game of championship rounds. And uh, Cam, woo, man, we've had a we've had a, a fun year so far. You're officially the 47th game that we're going to play in. Kevin has figured out a way to cheat the system and win 24 of those games. While <laughs> I am close behind him, I'm close behind him at 22, Cam. Now I want to tell you, he was season one one's champion so he's already had his fast ass success at this game right the producers have clearly showed him more love than me but i got the mouth of the south nation rocking with me and i think i, I don't know why I've, I feel I'm, I'm just asking hey cj vibe. pick all my questions so i can win just go ahead and ask <laughs> i feel a vibe with me in uk uh <laughs> cj so let's uh let's go ahead and take this thing home killer cam you ready to rock and roll man that's good all right round number one kevin you are a division champion not you you know Stop begging. All right, Cam, would you rather get a game-winning pick in a rivalry game or? Or a scoop and score in late in the fourth quarter of a championship game? I'm going game-winning pick, rivalry game. I've been dreaming. I'm in a championship game, though. He get the game-winning pick. 
<sighs> we're in a big rivalry game because actually our, our our rivalry is right down the street, Augustana. So uh, we played them last season. I wasn't able to play, obviously, but I was hoping like you know at least one of my fellow DBs would get a pick that game. So yeah, you gonna get one this year? Of course, of course, yeah. Especially that game. We get actually and when we went, the governor comes out to that game and the mayor of the city. Um, it's like a big ordeal out here. We get a key to the city. So yeah. Ah, okay, that's one of them kind of games. That's right. what all right, all right. I, I can see the energy behind that. I can see the energy behind that. All right, let's go. Round number two. All right, would you rather be a role player on a national championship caliber team or become an all American on an up and coming team? All American up and coming team. Well, I didn't get a sound effect when I when I won. I didn't hear that. I one. It was I just wet. Hit the wrong button. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. All right, get the round for you. Hey, this is, hey, we record this live, man. All right, so round number three, CJ for all the marbles. It's coming down to you, sir. Whatever you answer this way, it'll be tears of joy. And it'll be tears of uh, of unhappiness. Okay, and in Kevin's case, tears of jealousy. Here we go. On a passing down, would you rather cover? C.D. Lamb with Dak Prescott at the quarterback or cover Debo Samuel with Jimmy G as the quarterback? We'll probably go C.D. Lamb. Yeah. Yeah! Here we go. Woo! Here we go. <laughs> that dog. Hey, I wish I could crip walk. Hey, I'm on this <laughs> Yeah, we in this thing, CJ. That's what I'm talking about, man. Cause see, hey, I think you'll smoke, CJ. I see the lamb too, man. Yeah, and that's what I, and exactly, you know. Exactly, yeah, I want to race him. So. Yeah, because hey, that's what I'm trying to tell you, man. You you got that heat. You know how to pick them. And you're going to get that you gonna get that interception against that, that rivalry team this year. Yeah. Kevin? Sure. Show them the belt, Kevin. Show them the belt. CJ fans, the, 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 they, they deserve to see the belt, too. The one that's coming home to well, me. CJ should have picked my questions and they can see the belt. If he didn't, <laughs> no. 24 to 23, and we are getting close to history being made. All right, CJ, well, the title of the show is called You Got Next, okay? So we got to know, man. We got we got a football season coming up, but what are your big dreams, man? What are your aspirations? What can, what can those people that go to asklh.jr what can they look forward in following you, man? Um, just a motivated, um, young, inspired entrepreneur off the field, motivated on the field. Uh, you know, just just somebody that's just eager to get it, man. I mean, I'm the first person in my family to even go to college, so you know, it's like wow, you know, depending on me right now. So it's like, yeah, you know, heaviest head that with a crown. So you know, I'm just focused and you know, really getting out the mud for real. I like that. That wasn't getting it out the mud. You might be from Louisiana. You got some roots. You got some people from Louisiana. I, do. I, got, I got family from Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. Tree, man, I'm from Shreveport. That's okay, where I'm from. Me. You telling me. Yep, yep. I'm telling from Shreveport, man. Cooper Roll, stand up, man. I love y'all, man. CJ, me and you going to have to go down to the Mississippi. We're going <laughs> to go to that Red River, get us a little cup of that juju, and get back to doing what we do, man. Kevin, you can fix your face. Fix your face, man. This I'm just waiting for this part to be it's over. You. Can I just get it over with? Just talk about Louisiana, then get it over with. I'm tired of hearing about it. Are y'all there? We done, Kevin. All right. Good grief. All right, CJ. Besides Instagram, which we can see on the screen, where can people find you on social media? Uh, I'm on Twitter also. I'm not that active. But I'm on there also. Uh, my Twitter at name is uh, CLH underscore JR. All right. Pretty much yeah. the same. Just yeah, without, with the dot and the underscore. Okay. Yeah. So do you have any shout outs that you want to give? Um, shout out to the city of Pasadena. Uh, shout out to my family, all my folks back home doing this for you all right, so this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call out the person who should have next. Tell them, hey, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want you to do the same thing. With that said, um, CJ, who are you giving your game ball to? Uh, I'm going to give it to Marquise Ogletree. He's a DB at uh, Southwest Minnesota University. Marquise Ogletree. Hope I said that name correctly. You are on the clock. But Cam, bro. Oh, you an inspiration. I, 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 don't, I don't know how much um, this story happens, but I know it takes a lot of courage for somebody to come on here and say, hey, this ain't right, but I'm making the best of it because we, we we only had 30 minutes to go through this. But, dude, you got a lot of stuff going on in the future. Super bright. You're super smart. I love your energy, man. Keep doing what you do. Keep grinding because Cameron Hudson, you got next. And now you are part of our family. So anything you need from us, just let us know. Sports Life Talk Nation. Oh, 
man, these these shows happen all the time, and now you got all access pass to them. Go check out our archives of over 150 You Got Next episodes. Come be a part of the nation. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. Um, and, and check this out. You you can tell us who got next, right? Why don't you leave a comment, tag in somebody, and go to our IG page, tag in somebody who you think deserves an opportunity to be on this show, but also tag in five friends and win yourself a Sports Life Talk t-shirt. We're giving away free merch because 2022 has been awesome to us. The momentum has been awesome. We, we on that on that climb, and we want to make sure we give back to you guys, so just tag five friends in, leave us a comment in the DM section, let us know your address and your name and, and size, and we can send you over a free Sports Life Talk t-shirt. Kevin and I, we don't have followers. We don't have fans. We have family members, and we are maniacal, maniacal about engaging with you guys. So come hang out with us every Wednesday night. We go live. It is a show where the fans literally <laughs> talk to us while we doing it, and we uh, we host a show called Sports Life Talk Live with Manhattan uh, Miss Manhattan and Gemini Jones every Wednesday night. We stream live at eight o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Hey, we talk about everything. It's not just about sports. We talk about Batman, CJ. We talk we talk about Euphoria, Bell Ass on. We on Bel Air right now, so come come check us out. We got some good takes on that one, and we have a lot of fun. Kev, I'm back in the W column. I saw you've been a little salty ever since, but you know it's okay. I know it's a oh, tough time. I mean, it's a tough time. I told you it's gonna be some tears of tears of joy and some tears of jealousy, and we all clearly see which way that went. But uh, Kevin, I'll let you close us out, sir. Have you noticed, B. Jones? Whenever there are some Louisiana ties, I lose that episode. <laughs> Put your L's up. Yeah. Look, I, and look at this. Now he's just really down and just rubbing <laughs> it in. It's DJ, man, thank you so much for rocking with us. Whatever you need from us, even though we can't go against the NCAA, we'll try. But I'll take on the NCAA, Kevin. I ain't scared of them. You, you go right ahead. I have another co host. Co host next week. <laughs> Whatever you need from us, CJ, let us know, man. We'll do our I best to help you out, brother. I appreciate it. Sincerely, y'all do. Thank you. Yo, Cam, man, we appreciate it, bro. Sports Life Talk Nation, we love y'all. Stay safe, be blessed, respect each other, and love one another because together we are better. And keep dreaming big, keep fighting the fight and battling day after day because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet! See what's crazy is I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk out the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast to tune into just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom. You want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next. Just a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity What's up next is you, at least you better be yeah. You got next, yeah I can feel it, you're a winner just like me You got next, and what comes next? Tune in next time and you'll see Cause if you got next, yeah If you got next, if you got next Then you're just like me If you got next, if you got next, yeah Sports life talking this Yeah, 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 yeah Sports life talking this